Hi, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm. It's about that time of year. I'll be heading out to the garden center looking for plants to add to the garden. And like you, one of the first things I'm going to look for on the back of that plant tag is the plant hardiness zone. But have you ever relied on that cold hardiness zone and then found that you've ended up with a dead plant in a pot or out in the landscape? What if I told you that's not your fault? That that whole hardiness zone system is deeply flawed and is much less reliable and much less useful than you might think. Let's talk about it a little bit in this video about what its limitations are. So every time I see a video like this, I see them pull out the map and the map shows you the average coldest temperatures in your region. You can follow that on the USDA site, follow the contours, find out exactly where you are. And lots of debate goes into this. I, how many times I hear people say, they got me moved from a, a 6B to a 7A or uh, locally they'll ask, am I in 7B or am I in 8A? And the, if they realized how pointless those Bs and As actually are, uh, they might not even ask the question. The fact is that the map itself, those numbers, is only one half and probably the less important half of the equation. The more important half is the zone ratings of the plants themselves. And once you realize that those zone ratings are not very certain, then the usefulness or reliance on the map goes way, way down. I'll give you an example of this, Hydrangea Endless Summer. It was released by Bailey Nurseries and they rated it at lowest zone 4. Now, if you look on the Missouri Botanical Garden website, they'll show you that zone four at the top. But then if you go down into the comments, they'll show you that it's actually hardy uh, based on their results down to zone five or more likely six, five with protection, six uh, without. And so the point is that that spread between zone four when it was optimistically released and zone six in actual practical use in the garden shows you some, kind of the evolution of these zone assignments on plants. Typically, the uh, breeder or introducer is basing that on their best uh, good faith estimate of the breeding and some trials that they've done in house and they try to give you some guidance but from there it goes out into the community and then gets tested and it gets uh, subjected either to consensus or in fact confusion because many different sources uh, supply these in very very different numbers there is in fact no central authority no central a standardized way to know if a plant truly is a zone 3 or a zone 4 or a zone 5, much less the A's and the B's. And I think that every gardener should give a little bit of thought about how that uh, zone rating life cycle works. The breeder and the introducer sometimes will come out a bit on the optimistic side. Eventually that will get moderated or uh, widened by community input and you'll eventually end up with a one or two or three zone range that you have to reference so it can be quite useful when you're talking about being in a zone four garden and the plant is rated as a zone eight but isn't extremely useful when you take that zone a and b in five uh, as religiously it's a bit like trying to get things down to the very last uh, milligram and milliliter when the recipe just says add a pinch and water as needed it just isn't the same level of precision I should acknowledge that there are a couple of other hardiness zone systems. There's also the RHS or over in the UK, uh, and that has a central authority at least, so it might be a little bit more standardized, but I bet you they run into issues where they're dealing with plants that have originated in North America, and then they have to translate it over. That's a similar situation we have here in Canada, where Canada purports to have its own hardiness zone system, but has zero data on the plant, and so it all really has to rely on translations from the USDA system. So like it or not, the USDA system really is the basis for a lot of the plant zone testing, at least here in North America. So now I'd like to get some key takeaways from the video. And number one, I would say is ignore the zone A and zone B subdivisions within the zones. I just don't think it's supported by the plant data. So it's of limited usefulness. The second thing I would say is maybe wait for the consensus to develop around plants. Obviously, if you want to try new plants, just take it with a grain of salt. What the introducer or breeder is going to give you might be a bit on the optimistic side. If you wait for the community to converge around some zone values, then you have a better idea of what works in your area. But then the third thing I want to say is that really the the reason why plants die over the winter are varied and they are not all dependent on that zone number. It may give you the, the coarsest or grossest estimate of, uh, of hardiness, uh, but 
you know, the age of your plant, the establishment of your plant, the health of your plant, the uh, drainage in that location, the cover for shelter from wind, the snow cover, all of those things probably have a stronger relationship to survivability of your plants and landscape than do a zone number. So talk to your local gardeners and garden clubs, see what their experience is, particularly in your area. I guess the whole point of this is that uh, gardening is local and uh, and your local garden center and local garden clubs probably have a better idea of what's doing well in your area than does a zone number put out from halfway across the country or from across the ocean. All right, that's my point of view on this. If you have any questions, please drop them down below the video. I'll see what I can do to help and thanks for watching.